Hello and welcome to another Skyrim video. In today's video I will be showing you how to increase your Skyrim performance FPS, how to gain FPS and uh, play the game hopefully in a more enjoyable manner. So this is what I'm personally doing. This is by no means an ultimate guide on how to make Skyrim run flawlessly and uh, this will not be dealing with certain crashes to desktop and stuff like that i will simply show you what i've done to increase performance and what you can do as well because it's nothing complicated it's fairly easy to do and uh, the first thing that i'm going to show you before i go into performance stuff is the unofficial skyrim special edition patch you definitely want to get this this will fix a lot of uh, gameplay quest npc object uh, placement bugs issues gameplay issues so it might not necessarily help your performance but it will help your game qu gameplay quality so i'm going to leave you a link all of the links will be in the description of this video and before i get started in case that you didn't watch my previous skyrim videos you can go to the playlist tab find the skyrim playlist and there will be videos there that will show you how to start modding Skyrim, how to use Mod Organizer, how to install SKSE, the scripting stuff, and a couple of other videos such as um, which version of Skyrim to get in case that you're not sure. So make sure you check out those in case that something is not clear. I will be jumping into things here directly. So this is a utility that's called Bethany. So I call it Bethany. I think that's what most people call it like and bethany once you start bethany once you download it and start it, it's a portable utility you don't have to install it you will be on the basic tab and the way that this works it changes your configuration files for all the different settings and provides you with some nice interface options so you you do not have to do anything manually it can back up your files it can fix a lot of errors with mods automatically so that's pretty cool i love the fact that it it has recommended tweaks options so if if someone makes a mod and there's certain options certain configuration things that need to be changed chances are this will change it automatically for you so that's pretty cool now on the setup tab you want to make sure that you select the game that you want to edit game path steam steam apps where you've installed skyrim special edition and mod organizer for me personally i installed it inside of uh, se skyrim so for me it's the same as that one except i also created a folder manually mod organizer and i installed mod organizer inside there now any path this is very important uh, for me direct path does not work because i use mod organizer so only that works but if you don't use mod organizer if you're not interested in modding skyrim and you just want to increase performance then you will have this option and that's fine you might have to click on browse and go to your users folder the name of your computer documents my games skyrim special edition and then you find the ini file there but for if you're using mod organizer then you go with that one and that's it for the setup tab the basic tab gives you option to change resolution so this works similarly to the one you have by default in the launcher except you have so many more options and you have presets, which are both uh, superior in terms of performance and graphics compared to the default ones. You have poor, low, medium, high, ultra. I suggest you start with medium if you're not sure what to go with. Recommend the tweaks. All of this stuff is fine as well. Anti-aliasing, you can disable it if your computer is slow. So I'm not going to go through every option. I'm just going to give you an overview of what I've been doing. And if you put your mouse on top of every option, you'll have uh, a little description that you can check. So if you like it or if you don't like it, if you think it will help your performance, you can disable it. Now, general tab, the way that you can test if this works for you is uh, by disabling logos. So when you start Skyrim, I'm using it to start from here with the mods automatically and I disabled logos. So there's no Bethesda logo. That's how I know that it works for sure. Music, I kept music and I disable tutorials. Now gameplay, always run by default, NPCs can use ammo. This is nice because when NPCs attack you, let's say with with uh, arrows and stuff like that, they will run out of ammo if it's a long battle. So if you can run out, they can run out as well. Over encumbered reminder, all of that stuff. And interface is the last tab that deals with certain options. I have everything enabled, remove map menu blur, very useful. 
fix map menu navigation. I have some mods that deal with gameplay stuff as well, but it doesn't hurt to have this as well. Now detail is where things start to get interesting in terms of graphical stuff. Now I know there's a lot of options here for some of you that are not used to changing stuff. It might look overwhelming, but it's not really. You can, you see little sections, <laughs> sections, my apologies, uh, shadows, uh, draw distances, shadow qualities, ambient occlusion, decal stuff, particles, and uh, for me settings that I usually go for 1.5k for particles, medium, uh, medium exteriors only. Now disable gore, if you want to make the game more kid friendly, child friendly, you can disable gore. So gory effects, blood and stuff like that, you can get rid of that. Depth of field, decals, lens flare. Water, I have all of this stuff. And uh, improved shader, I actually disable that. Now draw distance is important. Draw distance, I put it at 2000. And exterior draw distance at 3000. But you can put it at 2000 as well if you want even more FPS. So if you don't care about seeing really far away, then you can put that for more FPS. Shadow by shadow resolution, I put it at 1K. And I use the light version for ambient occlusion. Uh, tree shadows, I disable this, but you can enable it. You can test, see if you like it without it. For me personally, it's okay. I don't really care. And it does give you a few FPS, so that's good. And then we have uh, view distance. This is also very important for your uh, outdoors performance. I've got the medium preset. And then here I have also medium decals. Object detail fade, also medium. And uh, that's about it. Object fade, actor fade, item fade. So it's fairly low. So I would say that's pretty good for now. And visuals, the final tab we have, uh, if you want to remove grass, you can do that as well. Uh, grass diversity sets the maximum diversity of grass types. I put this at 3, but you can even go 2 as well. You won't really notice much of a difference. And grass density, this will help your performance. So you can put something like 30 or 20. You can play around with different values, see what works for you. Dynamic trees, tree animations, skin trees all that stuff far off tree distance this is very important and uh, you can decrease that to let's say 25k or maybe even less play with different settings and that's it in 10 to 15 minutes actually not even 10 minutes for all of this to be configured you will see some heavy fps gains and most of the times most of the settings you will not see much of a difference uh, while playing the game, which is great because you gain extra performance at almost no cost. So this Bethany utility is pretty much the most important thing that you can do for your build of Skyrim. Now, after you're done, you click save and exit. And that's it, you go play the game. Now, I also have two other mods that I'm going to show you. One is called Skyrim Project Optimization. And what this mod does is uh, when you're inside indoors, let's say you're in a house with uh, two floors or multiple rooms. If you cannot see something, if, you, if you're unable to see contents of another room, then the game will simply unrender that. And that's brilliant because you don't have to render stuff that you don't see. So let's say you're on the top floor. You don't need the stuff on the bottom floor rendered anymore then your computer will unrender that stuff and gain you a couple of fps's so from my experience i've noticed maybe two three additional fps's indoors and again it's pretty much free performance so i don't see a reason why you shouldn't go for it if you can get free performance any F any additional fps helps so I'm not, going, I'm not going to go into details of how it works, but basically there are certain occlusion calling uh, things in the game that the author has placed. So as you move from one spot to the other, he's pre he pretty much instructs the game, okay, at this spot you cannot see the previous one, so feel free to unrender that stuff. And a uh, very smart way to uh, keep uh, the load minimal. Now the same thing, well not same, but something similar is uh, called insignificant object removal. I'm going to show you 
screenshot. So you have all these little things in the, in the world that are procedurally generated. They're like extra things. So here's a picture with them. Here's a picture without them. And this also works in water. Now, one interesting thing about water in Skyrim is, let's say you're near a lake or near a river or something like that. This stuff in the water will still get rendered, even if you cannot see it. So this is not bad to increase performance, especially if you your computer is uh, fairly weak. All this stuff here pretty much removes it all. So for me personally, I actually like the way this mod works. I prefer my game to be a little bit more light lighter than it normally is and uh, the underwater stuff I really don't care about it now what kind of FPS can you gain with this mod for me personally I've gained I installed the full version I'm gonna show you here let me see where it is insignificant object remover let's reinstall it real quick I went with full full options to remove all land pebbles water pebbles kelp all that stuff and then I also went with no thickets and no dead shrubs replace and for me this has resulted in maybe between one and three extra fps outside so not much but keep in mind every 10 15 fps that you go up it changes uh, makes the game more smooth so you can definitely see a difference so i would recommend insignificant object remover along with skyrim project optimization as two basic mods to help your performance and of course the unofficial patch and here's the Bethany I'm gonna leave you a, a link to all of these pages so you can download install and play around with it and that's how I've increased performance in my version of Skyrim um, nothing special pretty basic stuff but I thought you might like it and uh, I thought it might be useful for you as well so there it is if you got any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, click the like and subscribe button. There will be plenty of more Skyrim videos. I'm going to show you all the different things that I've done with the game. It's really enjoyable at this point. It feels more like a next generation version of Skyrim. And uh, as always, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you around, guys.